So this is a little different for me in that most of my videos are usually about a project that I'm working on or something that I've built. But what I wanted to talk about this time is some of the uh, inspiration and reference materials that I use to actually build some of these models. As you may have noticed, a lot of my videos recently have been about robots. And it's fair to say I've become a little bit addicted to uh, scratch building robots out of various bits and pieces. So in order to feed that addiction, I've been looking to art books, and models and things like that to actually try and uh, come up with some ideas and gain some inspiration uh, for future projects. So what I wanted to do in this video is go through some art books that I found really, really useful. So the first one is this one, which is uh, Akaban 228 by Calamity. Now, if you're into mechs, I dare say you probably know about Calamity. He's an Italian model maker, and he just makes these amazing resin kits. As you can see here in the book, he actually goes through his process and I was really struck by how a lot of these uh, mechs are just made out of sort of household objects like bits of pens and springs and things like that. But he puts them together in such a way that they really look like genuine articles, you know, genuine machines that could be out there stomping about and blowing things up. And in the book, he goes through his entire process, but also the world that he's created that um, these robots could exist in. And as you can imagine, it's proved very, very interesting and um, useful in coming up with ways to build my own robots. Now, I don't think I've quite matched the level of detail that he puts into his mechs. Nevertheless, I always find this sort of thing really useful to give you something to aspire to and a level of detail that you can try to aim for. So it's a really, really good place to start if you can find his book. Now the next one isn't really about mechs at all, but um, I've mentioned before my love of Dead Space, partly because it's a mix of all of the films and computer games that I loved growing up, but also because it's got a very particular design aesthetic to it, which I really, really like. Um, in particular, I like the rigs, like the, the suits that the main character wears in the game. And I just really think that a lot of the mechanical detail here is quite applicable to robots. Of course I had a go at building my own rig in the past and you may have seen my video on that. This book is always good for ideas, just for ideas about how mechanical parts can sort of be put together. And the thing I really like about these is while they are quite futuristic and quite sort of um, out there I suppose, um, there's still a degree of real world reality to them. I think that's something that's really useful and um, when I'm building something I always try to think about how it could actually move in the real world. So I'm not just gluing bits and pieces together randomly, I'm thinking about how they might move, how they might interact whether one piece will bash into another piece if it's moving around and I think having that idea sort of having an idea of how this thing could move how it could function does help give models a certain degree of realism now this is a book that I bought recently uh, to feed my growing addiction for robots. Uh, now this is, uh, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it, it might be Jacob Brzezowski or Jacob Brzezowski. Um, this chap though does amazing paintings of mechs and they're usually set in a sort of a, a alternate past. So a lot of this, um, from what he says in the book, is based in a 1920s European war, I think, between Poland and Russia. So a lot of it is uh, period painting, people living in villages, um, shepherds, that sort of thing. But in the background there's all these mechs walking about um, sort of large machines of war um, in the background and I just really love the look of this um, if you've seen some of my previous videos you may know that I'm really into steampunk so that alternative history is something that I, I really really like I suppose because it actually to a degree feels quite real to see sort of genuine historical imagery but with a slightly sci-fi twist to it just sort of grounds it in a reality a little bit more than maybe high fantasy set in the far future does so his stuff um, as you can see some of these images is really really cool the mech designs themselves really really interesting but also just the way that they're meshed into paintings that look like genuine period pieces really really works so I've seen this chap's artwork online before and that's what led me to seek out his art book um, but yeah really impressive stuff so if you can get hold of that I really do recommend it Another guy who might be uh, sort of thought of as a bit of a contemporary of uh, the previous is um, Simon Stalenhag, and if you're into this sort of thing, you might have seen some of these images online as well. Different style to Jacob Rosalski, but again, he's very good at anchoring sort of robots and fantastical things in sort of a real world recognizable environment. So in this case, it sort of seems to be a bit of a post-apocalyptic American sort of wasteland, but as with Jacob Rosalski, there's mechs in the background, sort of broken down, there's sort of fantastical 
buildings and devices set in a recognizable landscape so again I, I find this stuff just really really um, inspirational and the fact that it's sort of set in a recognizable environment I think really adds a degree of realism to it. Now back in the day I was a massive Modern Warfare 2 fan and so it was interesting to see that the guys who designed Modern Warfare 2 went on to make Titanfall. Now I've only played the game a little bit but I really really like the design of the mechs so I had to pick up the art book when I found it. Um, and as you can see some of this stuff's really really cool. The level of detail put into this and uh, just the look of the mechs I found really really interesting. And I think again they're grounded in a reality. I suppose in the same way that the power loader in Aliens uh, by James Cameron looks like a sort of a futuristic forklift so it's sort of grounded in a reality I think there's a similar thing going on here that you can sort of see recognizable elements within the mechs themselves so it's just a small selection of art books that I found really really useful when um, I've been doing this when I'm obsessed with an idea I do try and sort of feed the addiction um, one of the ways of doing that is of course building the models that I put in my videos but I also try and feed that some interest in other ways anything that sort of uh, relates to it to sort of uh, try and get some ideas try and uh, put those sort of elements together into something that I can build so anyway, I hope that was interesting, uh, like I say, a little bit different from my regular videos, but um, I wanted to share the sort of um, inspiration for why I do the builds, as well as the builds themselves. But anyway, that's it from me, so thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.